Tokyo Station's 100th anniversary is approaching. With 28 tracks and 4,000 trains arriving and departing each day, it's Japan's largest rail terminal. Over the years, Tokyo Station has been the site of countless hellos and goodbyes. The station building is an important cultural property. In 1945, during the Second World War, the third floor and its two domes burned down, and for many decades it remained a two-story building. Five years ago, work began to restore the station to its original appearance. The completion date was October 2012. The cost, 50 billion yen. The restoration project not only meticulously recreated the craftsmanship of a bygone century, it also included state-of-the-art seismic safety retrofitting. On this edition of Begin Japanology, our theme is Tokyo Station. We trace its history as a mirror of Japan's industrial growth and explore the continuing appeal of the nation's biggest terminal station. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Behind me you'll see Tokyo Station. The architectural style is Victorian Gothic, which for a Londoner like myself is something I'm well familiar with. Over the past five years, Tokyo Station has been the object of a major restoration project, which has finally reached completion. Let's take a look at what was involved. Tokyo Station is the gateway to Tokyo, the capital of Japan. It's a massive terminal station used by 760,000 passengers each day. It's located in the Marunouchi district, where many world-famous companies have their offices. Legions of business people use the station. The station building is a stately, imposing red brick structure extending 335 meters from end to end. The pair of domes at the station's north and south ends draw attention to its Victorian Gothic style. In contrast to the western style exterior, the insides of the domes feature Japanese motifs. Reliefs of the dragon, snake and other oriental zodiac animals representing the points of the compass adorn the domes. Can you tell what the design of this keystone is derived from? It's based on a famous battle helmet belonging to Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who brought all Japan under his rule in the 16th century. This carving of an eagle spans two meters. The station's interior is like an art gallery. In the middle of the station is a special entrance exclusively for Japan's imperial family. The general public are not permitted to use it. Members of the imperial family and dignitaries such as state guests and ambassadors come through these doors. They are met by special horse-drawn carriages that carry them along an avenue of trees to the imperial palace. Now let's step inside the station. It has a total of 28 tracks located above and below ground. The layout is quite different from the central terminal train stations in western cities such as London, Paris and New York. Many of those stations feature a layout in which passengers enter the station and then proceed to platforms that extend from a concourse in only one direction. But although Tokyo Station is the terminus for many lines, it was also designed as a through station. Seen from above, it has a lattice-like appearance, with several concourses running perpendicular to many platforms. Tracks 1 through 10 and the underground platforms are mainly commuter lines, connecting to other parts of Tokyo and nearby prefectures like Chiba, Kanagawa and Saitama.
Tokyo Station is the starting point of Japan's entire rail network. There is even a zero kilometer marker on every platform. This is where passengers board bullet trains for long distance journeys. Tracks 14 through 23 can accommodate 10 trains in the station at one time. Bullet trains travel at up to 300 kilometers per hour. From Awamori, 700 kilometers north, to Hakata, 1,100 kilometers to the south, the bullet trains swiftly deliver passengers to hometowns, holiday resorts, and business destinations. Tokyo Station is the hub of Japan's rail transportation system. But the station is more than simply a transit facility. It also boasts a vast shopping complex. Beneath the station you'll find numerous shops selling sweets, box lunches and sundries. There are souvenir shops and restaurants too. This is Ramen Street, with branches of eight of Tokyo's foremost ramen shops. It's so popular that long queues are an everyday sight at lunchtime. And this is Tokyo Snackland, which opened in April 2012. It brings together branches of Japan's leading snack manufacturers. Here you can see behind the scenes and learn how popular snack foods are made. You can even eat snacks made right there. Today, Tokyo Station is more than just a railway station. People come here to shop, dine and do much more. I'm in the underground shopping arcade beneath Tokyo Station and there are all kinds of shops and restaurants on both sides of me here and hundreds if not thousands of people milling around doing their shopping. The amazing thing is that this area is all inside the ticket barriers. So all of these people doing their shopping are presumably on their way to catch a train. It's quite incredible. And over here we have the so-called silver bell. For many years, if you were going to meet somebody at Tokyo Station, you would always say, ah, let's meet by the silver bell. In fact, I can see that there's a whole load of people over there who are using this for exactly that purpose. Why a bell? Well, for example, in Shinto shrines, there's always a bell like this, which you use to shake with a rope to summon the deity. In everyday life, bells like this are used to call people's attention. And at Tokyo Station, they decided to use a bell like this as a symbol uh, for a meeting place for people to get together. This one is actually the fourth generation silver bell here at Tokyo Station. Let's go back now and take a look at the history of the station. In 1872, the railway era began in Japan with a line between Shimbashi and Yokohama. Subsequently, the line was extended. But at first, Ueno Station, Tokyo's gateway to the north, and Shimbasi Station, the terminal for westbound trains, were not connected. So plans were drawn up to connect Shimbashi and Ueno by the shortest possible route, and to build a central station between them that was capable of serving the whole country. In 1903, the design of Tokyo Station was entrusted to Kingo Tatsuno, who had studied architecture in England. Tatsuno is adept in the English style known as Victorian Gothic, featuring red brick construction highlighted by bands of white stonework. In 1908, construction began on Tokyo Station. The blueprints laid out a vast station building of an unprecedented scale. The building of Tokyo Station was a massive national project. It took six and a half years and 740,000 worker days to complete.
with a facade extending 335 meters and north and south domes rising 46 meters, Tokyo Station became one of the world's largest railway stations. As Japan's railway network was built up and became more convenient to use, traveling became a pastime accessible to ordinary people. The number of people using Tokyo Station skyrocketed. In 1923, nine years after the station's completion, Tokyo was struck by the great Kanto earthquake. The city was devastated, but the station building stayed intact. In 1945, however, it could not escape the air raids of the Second World War. The lovely domes and the station's third floor were lost to fire. After the war, repair work began immediately. But because of a shortage of materials, the rebuilding of the third floor had to be cancelled. Tokyo Station was turned into a two-storey structure. Two years of reconstruction saw the domed roofs replaced by pyramid-shaped ones. The station may not have been restored to its former glory, but at least it looked adequate as the city's gateway. Japan rebounded from the war to enter a period of rapid economic growth. Train lines around the country were electrified and new trains were introduced. Timetables became packed with trains coming and going. Tokyo Station was a key presence in Japan's economic miracle and developed accordingly. In 1964, Tokyo hosted the Olympics. Bullet train services from Tokyo Station began in the same year. The bullet train halved the time for travel by rail between Tokyo and Osaka. Now it took just over three hours. Renowned not just for speed, but also for punctuality and safety, Japan's railways attracted more and more passengers. Eventually, the Tokyo Station site became so congested that it had to expand underground. Underground platforms were built for three train lines that mainly serve nearby suburbs. Then in 1991, the bullet train lines serving the Tohoku and Joetsu regions were extended from Ueno Station to Tokyo Station. As it has added more lines, Tokyo Station's importance has continued to increase. In 2014, Tokyo Station will celebrate the 100th anniversary of its opening and the countless greetings and farewells exchanged in the course of a century. In preparation for this anniversary, work to restore the station to its original appearance has been completed, opening a new era in the history of Tokyo Station. I'm standing underneath the famous dome and there's a mark here on the floor. I wonder if you can guess what this is. There's a plaque here on the wall that explains exactly what happened. This is the spot where Prime Minister Takashi Hara was assassinated by a 19-year-old in 1921, just seven years after Tokyo Station had opened. Hara was the first Japanese Prime Minister who was not a member of the nobility, and as such, he faced opposition from many quarters. It's just one of the historic incidents that has happened here during the almost 100 years of Tokyo Station's operations. This is one of the commuter train platforms and you'll see this column here with a slight Greco-Roman flourish towards the top. There's a few of these still left that date back to the original days of Tokyo Station almost 100 years ago. So amid all of the growth and the change, the station has retained a few vestiges of its historic past. Let's move on now and meet some of the artisans that helped to restore the station to its former grandeur. The restoration of Tokyo Station began five years ago. The project's aim was to rebuild the third story along with the two domes that burned down during the Second World War and thereby restore the station to its original appearance. The project was budgeted at 50 billion yen, 
and specialists in many fields from around Japan were assembled to work on the restoration. First came the job of recreating the signature red brick tile work of the station. The original brick tiles were used for the first two stories. New ones had to be made for the third story. A long established company in Tokoname City, Aichi Prefecture, was asked to make the tiles. Their task was to replicate not just the colour of the brick, but the feel of 100 years of weathering as well. There were two main challenges. The first was to replicate the bright red hue of the early 20th century brick tiles. The main ingredient in the tiles is powdered clay. By adding various formulas of pigments, the tile makers search for the exact hue. The process of trial and error took more than 20 attempts. Not only the colour, but the gloss had to match the old tiles. Another challenge was the shape of the tiles. These brick tiles used to build Tokyo Station have beautiful 90 degree edges. But when clay dust is compressed, removal from the mould always causes some dust to crumble away from the edges. So artisans hand formed each corner. We were determined to get the job done properly. They did it before, so we wanted to show that we could do it too. The hand-formed tiles are fired for two whole days. By slightly reducing the temperature from the usual 1,250 degrees, they were able to replicate the colour of the early 20th century tiles. The finished tiles are indistinguishable from the century-old originals. Meanwhile, the roof of the station is tiled with natural slate. Slate with its smooth texture has long been used for ink stones and roof tiles. The roofing material for the restoration came from Ogatsu, a district of Ishinomaki city, and one of the few places in Japan that produces slate. The area was struck by the Great East Japan Earthquake in March 2011. The ensuing tsunami swept away the slate factory and all of the slate prepared for the station building. This whole area was where our factory stood. And over there, by that wall, that's where we had our slate roof tiles, all packed and ready to be shipped. But the tsunami swallowed them all, the building and cars too. And everything ended up right here. Employees of the plant searched under the rubble and managed to recover 15,000 slate roof tiles. With the help of locals and volunteers, the mud was cleaned off the tiles to make them usable. The slate tiles that had survived the earthquake and tsunami were successfully installed on the roof of Tokyo Station. The tsunami destroyed everything, all the buildings, gone. So it's a miracle that the tiles survived. It would be nice if people who use Tokyo Station could look up at the roof and acknowledge that those tiles came from Ogatsu. I think the tiles will inspire people to help recovery efforts more. Tokyo Station was originally decorated throughout with the work of Japan's finest early 20th century artisans. Reproducing their craftsmanship was a major challenge. The copper detailing on the exterior of the station building is one example. This painting shows the domes of Tokyo Station in pre-war times. Beneath the clock appears a three meter wide decorative ribbon of copper plate.
but it was burned off during the war and never replaced. It was decided to replace the copper plate. The job fell to Mitsuo Yoshizawa, a coppersmith with 45 years of experience making decorative items, mainly for shrines and temples. I've never before worked on such a huge site with so many people. It is very delicate work and very hard to get consistency when a lot of people are involved. The copper plate is hammered into shape from a single sheet of copper. The more three-dimensional the shape becomes, the more the artisan's skill is tested. This was the most difficult part. Look at this flat surface. And now, look at it from the side. This is the biggest drop from one surface to the next. The bigger the drop, the more hammering it takes. After a month of hammering, the piece is finally finished. Now it is carefully mounted. The decorative ribbon has been meticulously handcrafted, just as the original was a century ago. The restoration of Tokyo Station is a masterwork into which many artisans poured their skill and artistry. This room is part of the Tokyo Station Hotel, which has been through a major renovation of its own in tandem with the restoration of the station. If you look up at these amazing high ceilings at four meters, not something you'll find in a modern day Tokyo hotel. And the view from this window is pretty special too. You can see the inside of the famous dome, which hasn't been seen by anybody for the last 67 years. It's been restored in all its former glory. And if you look down, you can also see the comings and goings of all the passengers going in and out of the station. This hotel was a big favorite with the literary set. Many famous authors stayed here. In particular, Nobel Prize winner Yasunari Kawabata stayed in a room very much like this one for several weeks when he was writing a novel called Onna de Arukoto, which translates as To Be a Woman. When the book was subsequently turned into a film, the hotel was deluged with inquiries from people wanting to book the same room. Tokyo Station has been restored to its original appearance of a hundred years ago. At the same time, it's also been fitted out with all of the latest technology to make sure that it will continue to stand for generations to come. Each day, hundreds of thousands of people pass through Tokyo Station. Ensuring their safety is the highest priority. During the restoration, the station was outfitted with state-of-the-art systems to reduce shaking in earthquakes. The station building withstood the great Kanto earthquake and other disasters to survive for a century. It was originally built on eight-meter-tall pine wood pilings, 10,000 of them. Japanese builders had long known that the resin in pine logs would keep out moisture and resist rotting for many decades. At the restoration, the pine pilings were replaced by 450 ferro-concrete ones, reaching 20 meters down into the ground. But because there were so many pine pilings, removing them all proved laborious, and it took three years to replace them. The station building has also been newly fitted with anti-earthquake systems. The street level of the station building was given a sturdy ferro-concrete floor. A new space about one meter high was left between the bottom of that floor and the ceiling of the first basement. Within this space, Rubber seismic dampers about 80 centimeters across are fitted. 
These devices are made of a special rubber compound that absorbs tremors. They transform the violent shaking of an earthquake into gentler lateral sliding. Tokyo Station rests on 352 of these dampers, but installing them was incredibly difficult. During construction, the station was in continuous use, meaning the work had to be carried out under numerous constraints. In order to install the seismic dampers, the station had to be lifted. To accomplish this, balloon-like jacks were used. But the building is 335 meters long and weighs 70,000 tons. It was impossible to lift the whole thing in one go. So the building was divided into sections and the dampers were installed one section at a time. As this work proceeded, the station as a whole stayed level and kept functioning. It was a very demanding task that took four years. We preserved and restored the station while also reinforcing it. I feel confident in saying that it will be just fine, even in the largest earthquakes. Hidden away behind the scenes at Tokyo Station, the results of all that hard work are keeping passengers safe. I've been living in Tokyo for almost 40 years now. Time and time again you see excellent old historic buildings getting torn down and big modern skyscrapers going up in their place. Some of the skyscrapers look fine of course, but it's a shame to see all of that history getting lost. And it's really quite refreshing to see Tokyo Station here with the sense of history, but with all of the really high-tech technology going in there as well. Way to go, Tokyo Station. I'll see you again next time. Completed in May, Tokyo Sky Tree is the world's tallest broadcasting tower. The changes that are swept through the old neighborhoods around the tower highlight the contrast found in contemporary Tokyo.